Tuesday, a woman is tried, sentenced and sent up for life. No. They don't dare let her out. What we got here is a real ticklish situation. Frank Jordan and his team of investigators are her only chance. They fight for the innocent and pursue the guilty. The Jordan chance. It may be the only one you've got. Raymond Burr stars in the Tuesday movie at 9, 8 Central in Mountain. Hank, we've got some fans here at Giant Stadium. Looks like we're at the zoo. <laughs> we got a gorilla. I don't know what that is. Is that a pig? What is it? I don't know. <laughs> All right, third down now. A yard to go as we start the fourth quarter. Randy Dean to Willie Spencer, and he dives for it. And New York, with a 10 to nothing lead, continues their drive, moving inside the 40-yard line. And time now starting to become important in this football game. Yes, it is. And they started this drive on their own 30-yard line, and they've had a good sustained march so far, doing a good job of moving the football and primarily on the ground. So from the 39, the Giants with a new series. Randy Dean in this game has completed 8 of 12 for 25 yards, suffered the one interception. He's rushed five times for 34 yards. He's hardly ever thrown on first down. He's not going to this time as Dan Dornick hammers it forward to the 36-yard line. Eric Williams making the tackle. That time, Turner was trying to trap Zook again. They didn't succeed in cleaning it out nearly as well as they have in the past. And Mark Arneson was involved. He obviously was not blocked on the play and was able to make the tackle. Al Dixon has checked in at tight end for the Giants. The Cardinals, five and one, second half of the season. Having some problems here today. Buffalo, well, that's a surprise. It looks like they can throw over here on Allen again, number 27, who's got a good cushion. There's Randy Dean. He's going to go on the option, and he's almost going to have his head taken off on that play. That's what the Cardinals are going to do. They're just going to say, fine, we'll play the outside, the pitch man, but we'll let the quarterback run, and the inside pursuit will catch him. That's what happened on the last play, and they played it terrifically well. Eric Williams was the guy in particular that had him first and help arrived and it's going to bring up third down now and eight yards to go. Still looks like they can throw on Carl Allen, number 27, left cornerback, see if they try to give him a little business over here on the left side. Let's see what happens. He's off of him about 10 yards. He's got a lot of room. He's picking up Moorhead, who's flanked to the bottom of the screen. Third down and eight for Randy Dean. Safety blitz. Dean throwing up the field, jerking the intended receiver, but closer to the ball was Tim Carney. Emory Moorhead was really wide open. He didn't see him. Uh, Gary never looked at him and uh, threw the ball incomplete. Well, that was a safety blitz with Roger Worley, number 22, coming on the weak side on the safety blitz. Start to say, Hank, that's where that experience comes in. They start running around after you, and it's to look up the field. It takes some game playing experience. And so Jennings will come in and kick. He's averaging 39 yards in this game. He'll be booting inside the 50-yard line. Gordon Bell goes back to the 10-yard line. No rush is put on. A wobbly kick. And the placement's going to come outside the 10 to about the 14-yard line. So the Cardinals do not have good field position, and they don't have an awful lot of time as they trail 10 to nothing with 12.56 left in this game. 22-yard kick by Jennings. Ford Pinto with a new design for 79. New up here, new back here. New in here with more standard features than last year. AM radio, rear window defroster, tinted glass, steel belted radials and more. And just look, foreign exchange rates have helped drive up the sticker prices of a comparably equipped Datsun 210 and Toyota Corolla to as much as $1,000 higher than a Pinto. Compare Pinto, it may be the best small car buy in America today. See the 79 Pinto at your Ford dealer. I have a wonderful experience for you that, well, just wasn't possible before. It's called polar vision. Now, say there's a family dinner and everyone's pitching in. Hmm? Voila. You're all seeing it again a few seconds later. It's a whole new way to have fun together. Polaroid's instant movies. I think it's remarkable. I do. From the 15-yard line, the Cardinals have the football down by 10. 10 to nothing. Dave Steep goes in motion. Jim Hart on first down wants to throw. Complete to Harrell. He's dropped immediately by Brian Kelly. 
He wanted to throw to Tilly, Hank, but it wasn't open. No, he wanted, he faked inside like he was going to throw the same pattern he's thrown many other times in the game inside, and then uh, Tilly broke upfield, but uh, the play was uh, defense very well by Otis McKinney, number 23 who, did a, 23, who did a great job of covering on the play. Well, for their efforts, they pick up two yards. Hart now 7 of 19 for 94 yards passing in the game. Deep. Tilly flanked out. Give to Will Harrell. And Harrell, I don't believe he got back to the 20-yard line, just about the 19 and a half. Steve Jones took a shot from behind. He's up and limping. Brian Kelly, number 55, made the tackle and did a good job on the play. But Wilkinson, his crew, going to have to come from behind if they're going to pull this one out. They have trailed 10 to nothing since seven seconds remain in the first quarter. We've got to send Bud some ice skates to match that hat. Third down, six yards to go. Al Chandler, the tight end, jumps into the right side of the line. Hart, good protection again. Harold can't handle it, and it's going to bring up fourth down. Again, the secondary had everybody covered. Yes, they did, and uh, Jim Hart looked downfield with the express purpose of getting the ball down to somebody uh, so he could get the first down, but everybody had it covered well. He tried to throw into the flat area. It was thrown poorly, so incomplete. So the Cardinals are going to have to kick the football. Mike Wood will go back. He's averaging only 25 yards today. He'll be kicking with the wind to his back. Jimmy Robinson and Maurice Tyler are back for the Giants. The Giants ought to come out of this with good field position. They're putting a return on it. Oh, did he kick that football? Look at that. It's going to go all the way down inside the 10. Saved, and it did not. Well, Perry Smith almost saved it in. That's got to be one of the longest kicks of this 1978 season. 81 yards. Incredible. That's the best one he's kicked or came close to kicking well today. Really, the other ones were, other ones were very badly kicked balls, but this one was a super one. If a good friend denied the time is special, Merry Christmas. The beer will Second, you guys, where do you think you're going? Merry Christmas. So tonight, let it be low and brown. <laughs> it's been a good year. It sure has. Here's the good friend. Ford introduces a new wagon for the American road. The all-new LTD Country Squire for 79. A new wagon with more driver convenience. More handling ease more window area, and more passenger room than last year's Country Squire. This land is your land, this land is my land. The all-new Ford LTD Country Squire for 79. See it at your Ford dealer now. Next Saturday on CBS, see the monsters of the midway, the Chicago Bears take on the Washington Redskins. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. An 81-yard kick by Mike Wood. Perry Smith just missed, downing the ball at about the one-yard line, so the touchback brings it out to the 20-yard line. Randy Dane put fits to Duck Coder, and Coder stays on his feet somehow and is able to get out across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Carl Allen made the stop, a seven-yard pickup. Eric Williams came flying over there, looked like he had Coder down, and all of a sudden he came on up the field. Ran right through his arms. Uh, Really, Eric had good position on him, got there in good shape, but just didn't make the tackle. Cleveland leading the New York Jets 27 to 10. Cleveland jumped on top early in that game. They've been holding on to the lead. Andy Dean on a second and two. Going for the first down, joining. And the rookie's very close. Across the 30 yard line, Bob Pollard making the stop. And that will be a first down for the Giants. Coder now, 83 yards on 17 carries. Leading the Giants here today. Dornick has done a very creditable job for New York. They've been able to trap Zook uh, very efficiently and very effectively uh, throughout the afternoon. Let's see if they try to trap on this play on first and 10 against the St. Louis defense. Moorhead, right.
Robinson, the wide receivers. New England still trailing Buffalo 17 to 14. Steve Grogan with a four yard run is just scored for the Patriots. Here's Coder. Line through, but just missing the tackle with Ken Green on a blitz. And eventually Bob Pollard drops Doug Coder. That time they trapped the other way. It was a trap, and instead of trapping to the left on Zook, they try to trap Bob Pollard with uh, Doug Van Horn, number 63, doing the trapping on the play. Here you see Van Horn, and he winds up trapping Neal, Steve Neal's 53, on the play. Defensive uh, people on the St. Louis Cardinals did a good job of stopping that trap. Green almost had him for a loss on the blitz. Brings up second down and eight. The ball at the 33-yard line. Nine minutes, 17 seconds left in the game. Here comes Coder again. Nothing fancy about this. They're just running right at him. Big collision between Pollard and Coder. Boy, Pollard really got a good hit on him that time. And here again, I mentioned several times, it's very difficult to run on Bob Pollard to the outside. He played that block of the offensive tackle very well. Brad Benson, number 60, tried to hook him, but he didn't succeed in getting it done. Pollard strung it out and got a great hit. So it's Coder. Excuse me, Hank, it's now third down and four. The Cardinals need to hold here. Look at this. Chicago on Walter Payton's one-yard plunge has taken a 7 to nothing lead over Green Bay. That being played in the Windy City. Of course, the Packers now on the doorstep of getting into the playoffs for the first time since 1972. Third down and four. Dean, Jimmy Robinson, Carl Allen almost had it. So it's going to bring up fourth down. And the Cardinals, Hank, are going to have to make their move now with 8.21 left in this game. You know, Dean had a shot to, to throw on top uh, that time. But Carl Allen made a good recovery on the play. But uh, Jimmy Robinson, had he thrown the ball straight down the field, it would have been a large game because he was behind Carl Allen on the pass. There's Jennings. You can see his average today well below his seasonal average. Boy, when it's cold, that football just doesn't travel as well. And there's Gordon Bell back deep for the St. Louis Cardinals. He hits a fine, lazy kick. Gordon Bell misses it. It's picked up. Wait a minute. They got a rule. It's dead. It can't advance it. They're coming up with a ball. I tell you, Gordon Bell has really had problems today. That was Maurice Tyler who came up with the ball, tried to advance it in for the touchdown, a 33-yard punt. Bell couldn't handle it. The Giants have the football, and Gordon Bell would just as soon forget this afternoon. He just dropped it. That's all. He was in good position, good position to make the reception, but he just fumbled it, and now it's the Giants' ball, first and 10, on the 37-yard line of the St. Louis Cardinals. That is four turnovers in this game for St. Louis. They haven't they haven't thrown the ball very often on first down. Let's see if they try to do it here in this situation. You can see they're going to the wind. Some paper debris blowing by now. Give to Dornick. Dornick able to move inside the 25 yard line. So the Cardinals with two big turnovers on the punt situation. One of them did not actually cost them any points. They were able to hang on. Now it's really put him into a backup situation. Inside eight minutes to go, trailing 10 to nothing, and the Giants could get anything on this drive. They'd really be in good shape. There's your time ticking away here at Giant Stadium. This is a battle to stay out of the cellar of the NFC Eastern Division. Giants next week meet Philadelphia. The Cardinals play host to Atlanta. Blitz on the play. And it worked for him. And a flag has been thrown. Ken Green got through there to make the stop. Steve Neals was also in there at number 53. I think we're going to have a tripping call. Watch it. Steve Neals. There's the trip. Well, that By replay showed it, didn't it? Yes, it did. Very vividly. You don't see that happen very often. So Jim Tunney indicating that he steps off the yardage and the ball is now at the 12-yard line and the Giants are in the driver's seat right now. Here comes Gary Shirk running in at a tight end spot for the Giants. For this Giant football team who's had a tough time hanging on to leads this year, 
has done a very good job thus far after taking that 10 to nothing lead in the first quarter. First down at the 12. Doug Coder up the middle and Coder to the five and Coder is in for the touchdown. Flags on the play, but Coder with a 12 yard run for the touchdown. Boy, what an effort by Coder. Yes, and he gets off the ball so quickly and he ran against the grain that time. He, he ran behind the pursuit of the linebackers and really did a great job of seeing where they were hustling to and went behind them and went in for the touchdown. He Beautiful play. Now over 100 yards, Hank. He has 102 yards. In 1976, he gained 103 against the Cardinals. The flags were tackling by the face mask violation. Of course, they won't even take that penalty as a 12-yard touchdown run. Now makes it a 16 to nothing game. Joe Donello to add the point after. Larry Mallory to hold. Donello's kick is on the way, and he's got it. And the Giants have a 17 to nothing lead. As we look again at the effort by Doug Coder, the 12-yard run. Good running by Coder. They got a shot at him. Dawson, Dawson did, but uh, he ran through that traffic, fights his way through the pile and into the end zone for the touchdown. Three unidentified 19-inch color TV pictures, each the best of its brand. Over a thousand people saw them and picked the one with the best overall picture. They didn't pick America's biggest seller, Zenith, or the second biggest, RCA. Over 60% picked the 19-inch Sylvania Superset. Over 60%. We're not the biggest, but a lot of people think we've got the best picture. The Sylvania Superset. Introducing Hertz Takeoff Rates. Save up to 35% on the average weekday rental when you take off Thursday through Sunday for a minimum of two to three days. Take off in a subcompact for only $13.95 a day. Fairmont, $15.95. Granada, $17.95. Thunderbirds, $21.95 a day. All with no charge for mileage. There are some restrictions, so check with Hertz. Take off next weekend with Hertz low takeoff rates. Here's another look at that play at the counter play. And they do a good job at the point of attack. Doug Van Horn, Gordon Gravel, number 30, uh, 71, and Coda, Coder does a great job of running through the traffic and into the end zone for the touchdown, a 12-yard touchdown run by Doug Coder that gives the New York Giants a 17 to nothing lead with 719 left in the fourth quarter. On that play, Roger Worley was called for tackling by the face mask, so the penalty will move the ball to the 40-yard line where Joe Donello will kick off. 17 to nothing. Boy, some big game shaping up. We understand Atlanta and Washington are tied 10-10, which reminds us next Saturday, Chicago and Washington. It's going to go down to that final week before it's all decided who's going where. We've talked about parity for a long time, and this is the closest it's been. And out they go with Will Harrell carrying the ball. And Harold's going to get out of bounds. Forward progress up to the 25-yard line. 17-yard return on that play. And the Cardinals are in danger of having a shutout here today. There's that last drive, 27 yards, set up by the mishandled punt by Bell, and then the 12-yard touchdown run by Doug Coder, who has a 102 yards rushing today. You know, the Giants really have had some good field position. They Initially got the ball on a 19 of St. Louis, then later they got it on the 38 of St. Louis, 15 of St. Louis, and 27 of St. Louis. So the Cardinals from the 24-yard line, 7:09 left in this game. Hart off to Will Harrell. Harrell's had a tough time hanging on to those little flare passes to the side. It's been a frustrating afternoon for this man, Bud Wilkinson. Hart now 7 of 21 for 94 yards. That's kind of deceptive because they've dropped a lot of balls on him here this afternoon. Look at Dallas. 
Dallas has really started to put it together. And Philadelphia really had to be hurting after that loss to the Minnesota Vikings last week. And then the Vikings took a pounding yesterday. How do you figure it all? Hard to figure. The old roller coaster ride from week to week. Second and ten. This is Dave Steep, and he's going to be short of the first down by about four yards as he goes out at the 30-yard line. Six-yard pickup. You again see how tough it is to stay on your feet on this near sideline. Steve has been the primary receiver all afternoon long for this St. Louis team. He's been the guy that Hart's been able to find open. They've covered Tilly very well. Steve now has four catches for 37 yards. Yeah, he's been very dependable, very steady, considering the weather has been like it has been. And this is what the Cardinals do so well anyhow. They throw the ball so well, but they haven't done a good job of it in this game today. There's your third down conversion, and that is not very good. Four of 13. And here we go again. Hart to Tilly. Defending on the play on the far side was Terry Jackson, and it's fourth down. So the Cardinals will be kicking. Maurice Tyler will go back for the Giants. You know, the St. Louis team really hasn't had any kind of a break at all from a field position standpoint. They, they've, they had it, they've had it on their own 20, uh, own 20, own 30, own 26, minus 17, minus 30, minus 16, minus 20, minus 14, minus 25. Usually, uh, you know, you're going to have 13 possessions. They haven't had any field position whatsoever. Well, they're going for it, as you can obviously see. Fourth down and four. And they're running out of time at the 6.56 mark. From their own 30-yard line. Hart to Chandler, and they got it. Al Chandler stays on his feet, and the Cardinals on a fourth and four convert. And now they have a new life. The ball out across the 40 at 12-yard pickup on the play. It was a very simple drag out, which means that the tight end just releases from his tight end position right out into the right flat. The ball is thrown right at the numbers. Chandler makes a fine catch and fights his way away uh, from the defensive back, uh, number 34, Larry Mallory, and makes the necessary yardage for the first down. You see the time, 6.48 remaining in this game. The Cardinals down 17 to nothing. First down. There's a delay to Will Harrell. Harrell breaks it out. He comes across the 50 to the 45. He's got a block, and Harrell is all the way to the 32-yard line of New York. Pat Tilly, number 83 downfield, just got in the way enough of the defensive back. There's a flag down on the play, however. 26-yard run, but the flag is way back at the 48-yard line, and it's going to go against St. Louis. You can see Dan Deardorff arguing down there. Doesn't do much good. No, sir. Just like trying to throw a spitball at a battleship. I don't think that'll work either. <laughs> so holding will bring it back. No, personal foul. Fifteen yards, and that's going to move it back to the 30-yard line. The microphone not working, so we don't know who that guilty person is. So at the 30-yard line, now it's going to be first down, 22 yards to go. Will Harrell, a pat on the back from Bud Wilkinson after that 26-yard run that will not count. Hart, 9 of 24, 112 yards. Tilling, Steep, go to the top of the screen, flanked out. Gordon Bell is now in the backfield, giving Harold a breather. Hart steps up, hits Chandler again, the big tight end, with a handful of catches today. And he makes it out to the 35-yard line, five-yard pickup. Brian Kelly making the stop for the Giants. So it comes to still 17 yards to go for that first down, second down. The Giants like that kind of... Uh, of a reception because it isn't very long, takes up some time, and that's all they're concerned about now is making sure they don't get anything quickly to get them back in this football game with six, five left in the contest. On the 35-yard line. Hart on a second and 17 protection there. He's got Steve, and Dave Steve with a fine catch inside the 40-yard line as a first down. The Cardinals not giving up on this one yet. 
Ernie Jones making the tackle. Good protection on the play, and Steve Ritty made a fine catch, and uh, Jim Hart puts the ball right on the money. Sets up nicely, plenty of time to throw the ball. Throws it right in stride, right at the numbers. Steve makes a fine catch, first and 10 for the St. Louis team on the 37 of the New York Giants. 28-yard pickup on the play. Steve really did a good job protecting that ball once he caught it. From the 37, a little give up the middle to Gordon Bell. Wait a minute, the ball fumbled loose. I believe it's been blown dead. I think so. I think they declared that it was blown dead, and St. Louis still has possession. There's John McCary. That way, the way was not Gordon Bell to carry the ball. That's Ted Farmer. Now, they didn't think Farmer would be playing any running back. He's a guy they picked up from a semi pro league in California before last week's game with Detroit. So he carried for the first time. He fumbled the ball, but it's blown dead. Harold and Bell are now in there. Farmer comes back out. Second down and six. Hart to Steve. Steve has the first down as he goes out of bounds. Just inside the 25-yard line. Otis McKinney defending on the play. Terry Jackson, number 24, is playing Pat Tilly very loosely, too. And uh, we might look for some business over on the right side if he continues to play like he did on the last few plays. The Browns still hanging on to that lead over the Jets. We have four minutes, 37 seconds left in this one. Just inside the 25-yard line. First down, St. Louis. Steve now has six catches for 73 yards. Chandler, four for 70. Pat Tilly still has a lot of room over there on Terry Jackson, number 24. Hard again with the protection. Wide open, Steve. Brad Van Pelt. Kind of was letting him know he was in the area anyway. It was a crossing pattern. He was wide open coming across the middle. The ball was thrown just a little bit behind him. It's a crossing pattern. Good protection up front. They have a stunt, the Giants do, with Troy Archer coming around the outside. Look, the ball's just a little bit behind, but he still should have had possession. Van, Van Pelt gave him a little uh, shoulder shot, but uh, looked like it might have been a little late, but they didn't call it. You know, the biggest problem they have with Dave Steve is to get him to relax a little bit. He gets that adrenaline flowing, but that time he couldn't hang on to the ball, but he's done quite a job here today. They'll get that with experience. They're really high on it. Here is Hart back to throw again. Chandler, and it's intercepted by Larry Mallory. Check that. Terry Jackson. That's his sixth interception of the year. Uh, he may go. Over there is Deerdorf, and Dan Deerdorf drives him out of bounds. Great effort by Deerdorf to save a touchdown. And Bud Wilkinson... Probably can't believe what he sees. A 51-yard return by Jackson. Here we see it again. It throws out into the flat. A little bit high tip to Chandler. Intercepted there by Terry Jackson, number 24. Goes down the, into the middle of the area. Goes back to the outside with a good convoy out in front. Watch what happens. I'm John Kelly, a tire engineer. And this is the Firestone 721 radio. A tire we have so much confidence in, we're backing every 721 sold for the rest of this year with this guarantee. If a Firestone 721 becomes unserviceable within two years, because of defects in workmanship or materials, we'll replace it free. Only road hazard and in-service abuse are excluded. The Firestone 721. We're so confident, we guarantee them for two full years. At 35 degrees below zero, this is what you can do with a banana. This is what happens to a freshly cut rose. And this is premium motor oil. At 35 degrees below zero, this is what you can do with Mobile One motor oil. Mobile One, the oil that saves you gas, helps get you going even at 35 below. Monday. A beautiful woman offers the white shadow a top job as a sports commentator and a lot more. What does it take to make him leave his team? Find out Monday night. A 51-yard interception by Terry Jackson, his sixth of the year. And the Giants have the football inside the 30-yard line. The Cardinals trailing in this game 
17 to nothing. They've been held to six points one time this year. That was by the New England Patriots, but not have not been shut out this entire year. Doug Coder carrying the ball inside the 25-yard line. Doug Green over to make the stop. Six-yard pickup on the play. Steve Niels came up nicely on the outside to try to force the play inside, but uh, they were still able to make good yardage on the play. Tim Kearney also was coming in number 56 from the side, but they were able to get inside of him and pick up six yards on the play, a second and four on the St. Louis 23. Coder now with 108 yards on 22 carries. Three minutes, 39 seconds left in this one. The Giants on their way to breaking the six-game losing streak. Coder hit by Doug Green again. Green is their impressive third-round draft pick out of Texas A&I. He's had a fractured thumb, a fractured hand, and a bad ankle. But when he's played, he's played well. They think he has a fine future ahead of him. Yeah, he's big and he's strong and has been very impressive in his rookie season with the St. Louis Cardinals. November 13th, the Cardinals, I should say the Giants, posted a shutout. The Cardinals have never been shut out this year. Six points against New England in one game. A couple of times they scored ten points, but never shut out. And right now they're in danger of not getting on the scoreboard here this afternoon. Here's Coder. Coder on a third and three, trying to get the first down. It looks like he's short. And up jumping around and limping on the play is Eric Williams. Steve Neal getting up slow. Fourth down. Fourth down and less than a yard to go. So the Giants trying to post their second shot out on the fans here, wanting them to go for it on fourth down. You can see some of them have left, and it is cold here today. John McVay's team has had the upper hand all afternoon long. Two tight ends, Gary Shirk, 87, Al Dixon, 84, in there at the tight end position. More head in motion on a fourth and inches, and Carter trying to get it. Over there was Carl Allen, the first to arrive on the scene. And they may have to measure. Mark Anderson really did a good job on the play from the side. Well, there's 2-0-1 left in this game. Leon Pyle and Jim Tunney and his crew are going to bring in the chain to be absolutely sure on this one. It's hard to tell from this angle whether he made the first down or not. It's going to be very close. Let's see. I'm not even going to guess on this one. Didn't make it. No, they didn't. So the Cardinals hold. And so with 2-0-1 left in the game, they can still avert the shutout. You know, Hank's people say, how important is that? Well, I tell you, the offense hates to ever get the horse collar. That's exactly right. And especially this, this team, here we are, Atlanta, 17-10 in the third quarter. Very important game for both teams. Well, we had Atlanta last week. They had a long afternoon in Cincinnati, but they've come back today. And Atlanta will close out against the Cardinals in St. Louis. Boy, it's going to be some final week of the regular season of play. Chicago Bears are still leading the Green Bay Packers in the third quarter. Seven to nothing. So Jim Hart now is going to fill the air with some footballs. You can bet on that. Pat Tilly and Tilly can't hang on. And we have come to the two-minute warning in this game. 156 to be exact remaining to be played. With the Cardinals trailing 17 to nothing. They'd like to get on the scoreboard. They don't want to go all the way back to St. Louis without at least scoring a point. Announcing a whole new breed of Mustang for 79. The turbocharged Mustang from Ford. With the performance of an optional turbocharged engine that took Mustang from 0 to 50 in an average of 7.1 seconds. Precise handling from sports car features and more. Mustang Turbo in three-door and two-door models. Capture one at your Ford dealer now. Hawaii has many faces, all calling to you. Come, paddle my quiet lagoon. Discover my miles of endless peace. Come walk across my volcanoes. Explore my mysterious caverns. Come play in my tropical wonderland. Come fly my airline to Hawaii. United, we built the largest airline in the free world. Come to my friends, fly the friendly sky. 
Back at Giant Stadium, the ball at the 20-yard line for the Cardinals. 1.56 remaining in this game. Second down, 10. Hank Stram has left her booth. He'll be down on the field to talk to some of the New York Giants. About their ability to break that six-game losing streak this afternoon. His heart to Steve. What a catch by Dave Steve. Remarkable catch. That's one of the finest catches we've seen in a long time. You have to take in consideration the weather, the fact that he caught that ball, was hit at the same time. Let's look at it again. Jim Hart with the protection that he's received all afternoon long for that offensive line. Now watch Steve. Look at this. He knew he was going to get hit. He put both arms around the ball, showed some real courage on that play, and he picked up 25 yards to the 45-yard line. Steve now with seven catches for 98 yards. He's from Portland State, a seventh-round draft pick. Steve again. Had people flying all over the field. Terry Jackson that time going after him. Well, Terry Jackson's been quite a story. He started out as the third cornerback. Had all kinds of injuries, and he's been a starter. He had three interceptions in the first three games. He now has six for the year after returning 151 yards just a few moments ago. Second down, 10 from the 45. 120 remaining in this. The Giants meet Philadelphia next week. The Cardinals close out against Atlanta. Here's Hart. Steep again, two calls. Dave Steep on the far side. Couldn't come up with it. Steep coming into this year had quite a career at Portland State. He caught over 141 passes in that career. He led the Vision II in receiving three different years. So his credentials have been impressive. He's caught a 55-yard touchdown pass against the Eagles. Last week, a 53-yarder against the Lions. And he's thrown a touchdown pass this year of 43 yards. So he's done a little bit of everything. Hart now has thrown the ball 33 times, completing 13, 179 yards. Third and 10. Hart stepping up. Pat Tilly, and Tilly a little behind him. Pat Tilly has had one of his long afternoons. That ball was a tough one to catch, but... Pat's been making a lot of those catches this year, so it's coming now to a fourth and ten, and you know the Cardinals will go for it. Pat Tilly has only one catch today for seven yards, giving him 55 for the year. Look ahead now on New Year's Day, 2 o'clock Eastern. What a battle they're going to have in the Lone Star State in the Cotton Bowl. Notre Dame, 8 and 3 against the Houston Cougars. Notre Dame against Houston. Hope you'll join us. On a fourth down. Hart trying to keep this going somehow. Completes it to Gordon Bell, and Bell doesn't make much. And the Times will take over. George Martin reacted very well. That screen didn't develop at all as the Giants were clear back there with Gordon Bell and made it very difficult to even complete the pass. You see the time remaining, 101. The Giants are on their way to their second shutout of the 1978 season with 101 left. Down in Texas, we have a saying. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. So when you see this little Black & Decker five and a half inch circular saw in your store, don't be fooled. It's smaller and lighter than other saws, so you can handle it easily. All right, we pick it up now. The Giants taking over on downs. The ball at the 46 yard line of the Cardinal. This is Mike Porter who has coming into this play. 122 or 112 yards rushing, I should say. And he picks up some more yardage. He's having quite a day. He led the team in rushing in 1976. He had two 100-yard games in 76. And he is having quite an afternoon right now. So we're going to have a timeout. 48 seconds left in the game. The Giants lead it by 17. Down in Texas, we have a saying. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in a dog. So when you see this little Black & Decker five and a half inch circular saw in your store, don't be fooled. It's smaller and lighter than other saws, so you can handle it easily. But inside, it's pure teeth. The five and a half are from Black & Decker. Small, light, and very tough. Yeah, 
John McVay, you can see a grin starting to form on his face. And this team going to break the six-game losing streak here this afternoon in Giant Stadium. Second down and six, 48 seconds left in the game. Here comes Coder again. He may have gotten a yard or two. I'm going to take this opportunity to thank our producer, Bill Barnes, our director, Bob Dunphy, our associate producer, Mike Albanese, and our crew here in the booth. Our statistician, Tom McEwen, and our spotter, Chris Mara. Tell you, our support's been outstanding today on a cold afternoon. And an afternoon with the Giants, I think it's feeling a little bit warmer than most people right now. Coder with 118 yards rushing now on 27 carries, a highlight of his career. Randy Dean, first NFL start, and he's going to come away with a victory. This young man had a 3.89 grade average at Northwestern, majoring in industrial engineering. Out of Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin, he and his brother Rob playing at Northwestern, and this young man who didn't play last year, coming in last week when the injury was sustained by Pisarchik, and it will be tough to dislodge from there. Here's Dean just killing some time, and he's going to be grounded outside to the 45-yard line. Fourth down, but they could care less with 34 seconds. Timeout call by the Cardinals. So the Cardinals want another crack at the ball. The loss will bring up fourth down and eight yards. They're going to make the Giants kick the football. And St. Louis doesn't want to be shut out. Somehow they want to avert that. As Gordon Bell will go back deep. Coming up. Next Saturday, 1 o'clock Eastern, Chicago against Washington. Washington losing today. Chicago is winning over Green Bay. That could be a big one. The Redskins desperately trying to get into the playoffs. Jennings will kick. He has a 37-yard average, and this is Gordon Bell, who's mishandled two of them. Fine kick by Jennings. It's going to make it into the end zone for the touchback. So from the 20-yard line, the Cardinals have it. A 39-yard kick by Jennings, and the Cardinals have 23 seconds with which to avert a shutout. Looking at other scores here today, Dallas is leading Philadelphia 31-13, fourth quarter. And now Chicago's leading Green Bay 14 to nothing. That is in the third quarter of play. New England. Is trailing Buffalo 24 to 21. Joe Ferguson with a 21 yard touchdown pass. And 27 24, Cleveland leading the Jets in the fourth quarter. A lot of football developing, and most of those games have great bearing on who's going to be playing some postseason activity. 23 seconds left. Hard off to Gordon Bell. Bell can't handle it. A lot of those passes dropped today by both Bell and Will Harrell. That'll stop the clock with 18 seconds. Hart now, 14 of 36. So from the 20-yard line, second down 10. St. Louis last week scoring 21 points against Detroit. Week before, 10 against the Eagles, and they had 27 points against the Redskins. But they've always been able... They get on the scoreboard that doesn't look like today, and that's Jack Gregory batting it down. That's the fourth time today that one of the members of that front four have reached up and batted the ball down. 14 seconds left. Third and 10. The Cardinals have won eight of the last nine against the Giants. including that 20 to 10 win on November 5th, which was the sixth straight time they defeated the Giants in Bush Stadium. They jumped on top of that game 20 to nothing, and it's been a turnabout here today with the Giants jumping on top and staying on top. Here's Gordon Bell. And Bell all the way out across the 35 to the 36 yard line. He's got the first down, but time ticking away, and it's all over. The New York Giants have broken their sixth 
three-game losing streak. They have defeated the Cardinals 17 to nothing. They move ahead of St. Louis in the standings of the NFC Eastern Division. The Cardinals now drop to five and ten. The Giants now at six and nine. And so this is Gary Bender for Hank Stram saying so long from Giant Stadium. We now take you to CBS Sports Control in New York. All right, welcome back to New York Live. We are just completing a pregame show for the Tampa Bay San Francisco Network. We now welcome St. Louis and New York. The game is over, and would you believe it? The Giants have hit their magic number again, 17. And this time, they weave a shutout. Incredible, isn't it? Seven of their last nine games, they have scored exactly 17 points. Let me get everybody up to date with all the scores as of this moment around the National Football League. It is Dallas 31, Philadelphia 13. That is going to be nine straight victories for the Cowboys over the Eagles. And, of course, the game that many of you just watched completed. 17 to nothing again. The Cardinals, of course, decimated by injuries much of this season. The Giant players rallying behind McVay. Jimmy the Greek says that there will be a coaching change and a front office change, but yet the players still like McVay, and they showed it today. 17-10, Atlanta leading Washington, a blocked punt set up the Falcons' go-ahead score. They close out with the Cardinals. If the Falcons win, a heavy favorite now to make one of the two wild card spots. And in a wild game, Chuck Knox, Buffalo Bills, went into Foxborough, seesawed back and forth. Now they have seized the lead again, 24-21. Hooks and Miller have scored for the Bills in that game. The Jets have just tied Cleveland, 27 all, and the Greek tells me that they just won the game in the fourth, but they're, hold on, that may have been <laughs> premature, hold on, that board has not changed, it is 27 all in the fourth, put one black mark down beside the Greek, 14 to nothing, Chicago leading Green Bay, and of course the story there is that if the Packers win this game today, with the Eagles losing, they are automatically in the playoffs. Now, let's go right away into the highlights, Dallas and Philadelphia. Let me show you why the Cowboys are indeed world champions. They have already wrapped up their division title. The Eagles, of course, were struggling. Cowboys went on the road and came up with a magnificent effort. Benny Barnes picked this pass off and slashed back inside the 15-yard line. Watch the screen. Dorsett fakes block, fakes block. Three men set up on the left. Gets in behind, 68 and 62, dashes to the end zone, extra point made at 14-0. Marvelous effort by Harold Carmichael. If the Eagles don't make the playoffs, Carmichael deserves to be in the Pro Bowl this year. That's three tackles, including D.D. Lewis and Harris that he shook free from. To the six, Mike Hogan for the touchdown. It was a contest, 14-7. Now watch Staubach from the shotgun. Tony Hill and Drew Pearson. Dangerous on either side for Tom Landry's attack now. Tony Dorsett on the sweep. Coming left, getting his second touchdown. 31-13 right now in the fourth quarter. And the NFL today will continue on CBS in just a moment. I'm tough and I'm tested. That's why by Ford, I was requested to come up here to tell you how Motocraft auto parts from Ford were tested tough in Alaska. Motorcraft tune-up kits with spark plugs were tested in 50 cars and trucks from Ford, GM, and Chrysler. After six months, only one spark plug couldn't take it. One! Motorcraft tune-up kits, they have the stuff. Motorcraft parts are tested tough. A guy I know tells me this Sunbeam Adjustable Groomer Razor is the greatest shaver ever made. Well, I say, so what? I'm a blade man. He says, try it, and you won't be. He's right. Here's how Sunbeam's groomer razor works. 12 stainless steel blades cut at 8,000 strokes a minute through the thinnest shaving head you can get. Stands whiskers up and shears them off, at or below the skin line. You a blade guy? Try this. Buy the groomer. Get an electric clock free. Details of participating dealers. I'm going to do something only a Bob Lilly would do. And I'm going to use the new Black & Decker Best Line Router. It's the best home-use router we've ever made. It's going to trim the ends and make a nifty edge and dovetail this drawer. It's even going to write. There. Here, 
Coach. When America has a job to do, it reaches for Black & Decker. The new Black & Decker best line of power tools. You want all the samples in Seattle by tomorrow? All the deal is off? Relax. Just relax. It'll be on your desk in the morning. Toledo? Sure. Overnight? Sure. Tomorrow? Sure. Absolutely. Positively. Promise them anything. You bet. Then call Federal Express. No problem. Federal Express, when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight. The Greek was premature, but not by much. The Jets recovered a fumble kickoff. Kevin Long has just scored, and the Jets staging another improbable comeback to keep those playoff hopes alive. An amazing coaching job by Walt Michaels. Definitely a candidate for Coach of the Year. Irv, let's turn our attention back to some highlights. Okay. Well, the Giants, as you indicated, Brent, have scored 17 points again, but this time they won the ball game, 17 to nothing, knocking off the St. Louis Cardinals in the Meadowlands. And it was rookie Randy Dean, a quarterback, working to his rookie fullback, Dan Dornick, who blasts up the middle for 16 yards. A couple plays later, Dean rolls out, hits tight end Gary Shirk in the end zone, and the Giants take a 10 nothing lead in the first quarter. Dave Jennings is back to punt here, and as he gets the ball up nice and high, it's muffed by Gordon Bell. It's muffed. And it's recovered by, muffed by Gordon Bell. It's recovered by the Giants. A few plays later, Doug Coder goes in from the 12-yard line to take a 17-0 lead. St. Louis has the ball a few plays later. Fourth and two on the 19-yard line. The ball is booted away. Watch this kick. Brent, this is an 81-yard punt. Longest in the league, I'm sure. And the Giants, of course, won the ball game 17-0. All right. Washington, Atlanta in a fierce defensive struggle and the Falcons have finally seized command down there and of course next week they close out against the St. Louis Cardinals so let's take a look now at some of the highlights here stand back for the touchdown seven to nothing Falcons Theismann rallying the Redskins going to Danny Bugs to the one yard line and from there it was John Riggins for the touchdown it was tied at seven here's the key turnover they block Mike Bragg's punt. Earlier in the game, off a fake punt, he completed a pass, but this time, Bias gets in on it and recovers it at the one-yard line. And from there, it was Bubba Bean slashing in for the touchdown. 17-10 right now, Atlanta in the fourth quarter. And Irv, how about that battle in Chicago? Well, I tell you, the Bears just didn't give an inch today, Brent. They're leading this, the Green Bay Packers right now, 14-0 in the third quarter. They're playing the role of the spoiler. It's freezing cold, below freezing, as a matter of fact, in Chicago. And in the second quarter, we see Walter Payton go over from the two-yard line after an 83-yard offensive drive, and they score 7-0 here. Carson hits a nice punt here to Johnny Gray, and watch what happens. He's popped there. Ball pops out of there, and Walter Shad recovers it for the Bears. A few plays later, the Bear offense gets on track once again, and Stipps hits James Scott on a 35-yard pass. He goes in, and the Bears lead in the third quarter by 14-0. Packers are in trouble, Brent. Indeed, and let's check again the score. The Jets and the Browns, not quite yet over. 34-27, one minute and 26 seconds to go in that football game, and the Jets have snapped back. We have no other finals that have come in right now to try and clarify the playoff picture, although Irv says the Packers are in trouble. All they needed was a victory. So if you're looking ahead now toward next week, the Packers must go out and play the Los Angeles Rams. Meanwhile, Minnesota plays in Oakland. Those are the two key doubleheader games coming up on CBS. But first of all, Oakland has to look forward to a game that's going to begin in about five minutes down in the Orange Bowl in Miami. Now, Jimmy says that the Raiders had a marvelous practice week, and they're going to go all out. We're going to find out. We hope you've enjoyed the NFL Today on CBS. To Jane and Irv and Jimmy the Greek, I'm Brent Musburger. We'll see you all next Sunday. And for San Francisco, Tampa Bay, we'll see you at halftime. Stay tuned as the NFL Today continues after this word from your local station. It's the third annual Circus of Sixty minutes goes to war, a gang war.
talks to doctors about drug addictions, their own, and looks at women who are fat and proud of it. 60 Minutes, tonight on CBS.